Hey y'all, today we are going to be talking about skin minimalism. What is skin minimalism? Who is it for? Who is it not for? And what are the benefits of it? So without further ado, let's get right into this video. What is skin minimalism? As the name implies, it is having a minimalistic skin care routine. Being a medical esthetician, when I'm seeing a new client, I always like to start my clients off at what I call baseline or this minimalistic skincare routine. The reason for that is I don't know what their routine was like before they began seeing me or if they even had a routine. So I like to play it safe and also by limiting the number of steps you have, that's a one, save you time and two, it's also going to help to repair our skin's natural barrier, our moisture barrier. Think of this as a brick and layer mortar that's gonna help protect our skin. When that stays regulated, you'll notice things like dehydration, redness, sensitivity. Some of these things that might come and go in your pre-existing skincare routine, they might kind of level out and get a little bit better. So that could be a sign to you that maybe something you were using isn't best suited for your skin. This is kind of like your skin's wellness check. Who is this skin minimalism for? Honestly, it's for everyone. Having a very basic routine Routine is going to help figure out what's the status of your skin. Where is your skin at baseline? What sensitivities might you be experiencing? Are these sensitivities, are they temporary conditions or are they something that maybe you should work with your healthcare provider or dermatologist to find out what's going on. It's your reset period. It's kind of like giving your skin a detox, you could say. When we're starting a minimalistic skincare routine, I always like to suggest looking for products that are free of some of the common irritants, such as fragrance and essential oils. While those are not bad for the skin, they might cause sensitivity in some people. And when I'm doing this kind of reset period for the skin, I like to cut out anything that might be irritating. So baseline is where we are starting. The first step I like to look at is using a cleanser. Why do you need to use a cleanser? Well, it's going to get all the daily debris, sweat, oil, grime, sunscreen, makeup off your skin. Do you need to cleanse twice a day? Not necessarily. Normally, unless someone is very, very oily and they wake up in the morning with a very kind of oily film on their skin, then I will suggest splashing the skin with water and moving on with the rest of your routine. For basic cleansers, I've talked on and off for my love of the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser, which is something great for people with more normal to oily skin as that kind of gel textures and be really nice for cutting through that oily layer of the skin. If you're someone who is more on the normal to dry side, I really love the La Roche-Posay Telerian Dermo Cleanser. It's a nice milky cleanser that's just really gentle at removing those surface impurities without compromising or stripping the skin. One that I'm using now and really enjoying is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Fragrance Free. This is a nice thin gel cleanser. It's almost like a milky gel as it emulsifies when it comes into contact with water. It doesn't bubble or suds up. That Way you're not going to have to worry about it stripping away at the good things that we want to keep on our skin. It's going to remove what you don't want and keep what you do want on the skin. And the other cleanser I've been using, which I left in my washroom, is the Dr. Sam's Flawless Cleanser. Very, very nice cleanser. Very reminiscent of the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser. It has a shorter ingredient deck and it's also a little bit more gentle as it doesn't cut through oil the same way the CeraVe does. For me, I find them quite interchangeable, but if I'm going to have a really oily day, I would still go for the CeraVe over the Dr. Sam's. If you're looking at the two cleansers and you're not sure what to play with, what you want to try. I feel like if you're normal to oily, you can't go wrong with either cleanser. If you're someone who wears more of a long wearing water resistant sunscreen, a gentle cleanser like this might not be enough to get it off. Or if you're someone who wears a full face of makeup every day in combination with your sunscreen, this might not be enough to get it all off. That's when you might want to go in with the oil cleanser. I really love the Kose Softy Mo Cleansing Oil, the Clinique Take a Day Off, 
cleansing balm is really good and the Neutrogena body oil fragrance free is also really wonderful. All the products I talk about today, I will have everything linked in the description box down below. And I'll also have little notes next to each which skin type I recommend the products for. So if you're kind of shopping around, that will be your kind of one-stop shop to put together your personal minimalistic skincare routine. We want to lock that moisture into our skin when it comes in contact with water. For that, you want to apply a nice moisturizer. Currently, I'm using the Dr. Sam's Flawless Moisturizer. It is a very simple shea butter based moisturizer full of good fatty ingredients that are going to help to create a nice seal on the skin. And I find this is very lightweight and I would feel like it's best suited for people with normal to slightly oily skin or slightly dry skin. I feel like the extremes of dry might not find this hydrated enough and the extremes of oily might find this a little too rich filling on the skin. So I'll have some alternatives listed down below for those. Finding a moisturizer that you enjoy without any type of fussy or fancy anti-aging, anti-acne, just a good basic moisturizer. Applying that right after you cleanse your skin will help protect your moisture barrier and keep all that good moisture in the skin, which will help with your surface irritations that you might be experiencing. And the last product we're gonna look at is something very near and dear to my heart, which is something that everyone needs to get in the habit of doing because your skin will thank you in the long run. And that is using a sunscreen. Now, when I'm working with clients, I generally suggest for this period looking for a mineral or physical or an organic sunscreen, which basically means the filters in the sunscreen are gonna be either titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. And we call them inorganic filters because they are mineral compounds based in carbon. <laughs> so if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> and the sunscreen I have here is one by Elta MD. This uses both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. This is also a tinted sunscreen, which is even better if you were someone who likes to wear makeup and you like sunscreen, if you're someone who likes more of a light to possible medium coverage foundation, you might really, really like this. Normally zinc and titanium dioxide filters leave behind a very unpleasant white or gray or even purpley looking cast on the skin. Having something with a tint that is suitable for your skin tone will help mask that. Also, mineral filters tend to be a little bit more gentle on the skin. So if you're someone who has had a procedure, your skin is very reactive, you find it gets just very irritated by a lot of different products, then normally we will suggest a mineral, physical, or inorganic sunscreen. The tricky thing with these is the shade ranges have become a lot more expansive and more inclusive compared to where they were a few years ago. But people who are very, very fair or people who are very dark, they're still a lot of opportunity for more shades and sunscreens. If you're someone who wants to dabble with organic, chemical, or a combination sunscreen filter, which is anything that is not zinc or titanium dioxide, then you might want to look at some of those. My favorites are from Japanese and Korean brands. They use some different sunscreen filters that are not approved for use here in North America. I find some of the sunscreen filters that are available in the Asian market, even though they are a chemical filter, they are very, very gentle on the skin. They don't leave a white cast. And if they get near the eyes, they don't sting like something that we have here in North America, which is like your octibenzone, octosalate, octocrylene. Those around the eyes, they can sting. And that's why I generally avoid them in my routine because my eyes are very sensitive to them. For people who are combination oily, if your sunscreen has a nice moisturizing base, you might find that you can skip your morning moisturizer and just use your sunscreen. Cuts down on steps, saves time, and you're getting double duty out of a product. Most sunscreens these days have some moisturizing ingredients in their kind of base formula, which makes it suitable if you want to skip on a moisturizer. For me, spring into summer, I normally skip a morning moisturizer because my skin produces oil, things can feel heavy, so I just rely on a nice sunscreen as my moisturizer. This skincare routine is not just for the face. Whatever we put on our face, take it down the neck and the chest and the back of the hands. These are the areas that most people neglect and they are some of the first places to show signs of 
premature aging. If it goes on your face, generally I say carry it down to the dimple because that way if you're wearing a low cut top or something that's open, then this is gonna look nice and fresh like this is. Our hands are showing all the time. And a lot of us want to avoid having like crepey looking hands or hands that are very spotty from sun damage. So anything that goes here, here, and here. Talking about things that are neglected, don't forget your lips. They're there for us. We use them to talk. We use them to kiss. We use them to eat. We need to protect them. Give them a little bit of love. Give them a little bit of pampering. In the morning, I like using a sunscreen. This is one by Vane Cream. This is another mineral-based sunscreen. I'll have some other ones with different filters and tints down below. I enjoy the Vane Cream because it is a dimethicone base, which is going to select like a sealant, which is going to keep all the moisture and plumpness in lips. It's also a SPF 30, which uses zinc and titanium dioxide. If you're going to wear this outside the house, you might want to put a tinted lip balm or some type of lip color on top of it because if you're applying the amount you need to get adequate protection on your lips, they're going to look white, almost purple. I know for me, because my lips are quite pinky naturally, they look kind of purpley gray or lavender when I apply this by itself, but I'd rather keep my lips looking fresh and healthy for longer and I have a large makeup collection. I can cover this up very easily. At night, I like to keep things even more simple and I use my CeraVe healing ointment. This is a great occlusive balm. It's a petrolatum base. Petrolatum got a bad rap a few years ago. You find it in things like your Vaseline. It, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create almost like a seal or a film on the skin. It's thick, that's why we want to make sure we're properly cleansing our skin because this is gonna be like the Band-Aid you put on the skin to keep that moisture in. I like using it on the lips to keep them nice, protected, and hydrated through the night. I'll also, before I use a more active ingredient like exfoliating acids, a retinoid, anything that might irritate my skin when I'm not on the minimalistic skin carotene, I'll put it at the corners of the eyes, around the nostrils, corners of the mouth, and even the inner corners. If my under eyes are feeling a little dry, especially now that here in Canada, we are in the middle of winter, I'll take a little bit of this and I'll just dot it under my eyes where I've properly cleansed and removed all the excess dirt, oil, makeup, sunscreen from under my eyes. It's just gonna create a nice like little bubble wrap under my eyes. And then when I wake up in the morning, they're just gonna look a little bit more plump and revived than they were the night before. I hope that made sense to all of you. What is skin minimalism? Who is a minimalistic skincare routine for? Who it can benefit? If this is something that you are gonna try out, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you have any great minimalistic skincare products that you love, list them down below because everyone has different tastes. So I would love this comment section just to be a nice like little forum of products that we love for giving our skin a little extra TLC. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and share it with a friend who might enjoy having a more minimalistic skincare routine. Until I see you in the next video, I hope you all are staying safe wherever it is you are in the world and have a great rest of your day. Bye y'all.